Hello and welcome everyone to this session on DNB Theory, April 2024, Paper 1. My name is Dr. Janvi and uh, today we are going to be discussing the questions that have come in DNB Theory recently. Uh, so, as you all know that uh, your the next set of DNB exams are very close by and I thought this would be a good time to discuss a few of the papers uh, that uh, a few of the questions that have been recently asked so that you all can easily write uh, the answers to the same. But before we start, I would like to tell you guys or update you guys about the fact that we already have the solutions of all the DNB theory papers up to date on the app and not just the app we have also made books of these we have made it available to all of y'all for absolutely free so for those of you who are our subscribers and have not received the books please make sure to write to the team and get these books because they will be a game changer for you when you're preparing for the exams as we all know the first thing that we refer to when we prepare for the exams is pyqs so definitely make sure you have this paper now this um make sure you have the books now this paper has 10 questions yes but they are mostly divided into a and b parts each so like question one has two parts 1a 1b 2a 2b 3a 3b so we will be covering the first three questions today and that is actually six questions in all because all of them had parts a and b so let's get to it now, I'm going to discuss the points that you'll need to be writing for the exam, how to write in the exam, how to maximize your marks and increase the effects of your presentation. If you want like exact word to word or line to line what has to be written, it as I told you, it is there in the DNB theory solution book. All right. Okay. So let's go on. Uh, now, a few of y'all had a few uh, doubts that ma'am we have to look through a lot of uh, questions like there is no index to the book so what I have done for these books is that in the beginning I have put for you all the questions that we will be discussing today so all you need to do is just watch the first two minutes of the video and see what are the questions in it so like here you are going to discuss about airway concerns in elderly colloids pneumoperitoneum conscious sedation and also two other questions. So, you know, in the start of the video only that this video will be discussing these questions. All right. So that is like a short index for you. all So let's start off with our first question for today. So the question says, define elderly. What are the airway concerns in elderly? Okay. So now, first of all, learn how to write the answer in the exam. So we have in DNB, they typically give you exactly uh, how many marks they are going to allot to each of the topics okay so here they are um Asha, can you switch off the audio because it's interfering with the class yes <laughs> i can hear the monitor in the background all right <clears throat> okay so here they have given you that define elderly what are the airway concerns in elderly so this is one mark plus four marks okay so one mark is for the definition of the elderly and four marks is to discuss the airway concerns in elderly. All right. So <clears throat> let's discuss the definition. The de definition as written over here is a person aged 65 years or more is referred to as elderly. Now, I want to just take one minute of your time. The thing is that this has come in a read only format. I want to be able to write. Yeah, okay. So they say that a person aged 65 years or more is often referred to as elderly. So this is your one mark for writing the definition of elderly. All right. Then the next four marks is divided into the second half of the question. What are the airway concerns related to elderly patients? So you will first write the subheadings of this. All right. So you write down airway concerns in elderly. Then you write down three subheadings in it. So anatomical concerns related to the airway. Then we have physiological concerns related to the airway. And we have pathological concerns related to the airway. Okay. So you know that out of these four marks, definitely when you write one mark, you will get an anatomical concerns. One mark, you will get in physiological concerns. One mark, you will get for pathological concerns. Okay. <clears throat> Where will you get the fourth mark? The fourth mark, you will get 
if you draw this diagram okay so even though you don't have time or maybe you're not a very good artist what i really suggest is that you all make the most simple diagram you can just make a diagram of a uh, elderly patient who's walking with a stick and just mark over the lungs whatever other points that you guys are writing down okay so this is the art of writing the paper just remember that the examiner is never going to have the time to go through your entire paper to go through each and every point this is how i actually got my gold medal by writing papers like this also i would suggest you to do one thing like if you're taking the same pen you can just underline or make circles like this on the subheadings okay but if you are taking if you are allowed to use colored pens in some colleges they don't allow to use colored pens some universities so make sure you uh, check that you can write with colored pen over here anatomical physiological pathological so these kind of headings you can write in different colored pens and then below that you write the points tap 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 in bullets or under numbers okay so when your examiner sees that you have noted down so many subheadings and so many points under the subheadings he is automatically going to give you the marks versus someone who does not know all these tricks and this person will just write 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 he'll write maybe 10 or 12 lines or maybe one page of the answer this whole thing he'll write in one page obviously the examiner is not going to go through the entire thing and then you know he'll just randomly give him marks like out of 5 marks he will give him say 2 two, two and a half marks but what you have done over here is you have answered to the point and you have made sure that for this definition you get one mark for each of these points that you have written down over here you get one mark each and for the diagram you get one mark so you have given the examiner a reason to give you 1 plus 4 marks at least you will get 4 out of 5 if it is a good examiner you have written your handwriting presentation is also well you can even get 5 out of 5 okay sorry i took a little bit of time over here because i wanted to explain to you how to write the papers well now let's get into the entire gist of the question okay so when we talk about airway concerns in elderly the first subheading that we write what are the anatomical concerns related to the airway so first will be dentition so can anyone tell me what happens to the dentition in elderly you can write in the chat box anyone ankur nandini ajmal uh, a lot of you are exam going now so okay so with regards to the dentition we know that elderly patients have a lot of loose teeth okay and another thing that they have is most of many of them may be edentulous okay so you have to write and one more trick let me give you one more trick to get more marks in the exam at the end of every subheading like when you write over here anatomical concerns then you will write down below every point anesthetic implication you just have to put this word you know so when you write anesthetic implication so you write in dentition the patient may have loose teeth or or poor dentition what is the anesthetic implication of the same that you may dislodge or break a tooth during intubation patient may be edentulous or he may be wearing artificial dentures so what is the anesthetic implication of the same that mask ventilation or forming a mask seal with a patient who is edentulous is difficult okay buck teeth is not seen in elderly usually buck teeth is seen in small children in fact all right so this is what will tell the examiner that yeah you know as an anesthetist what are you supposed to focus on all right next thing is about the cervical spine mobility so as we know that with age patients may end up getting osteoarthritis because of that osteoarthritis or with age and a lot of anatomical changes many a times women get cervical spondylosis okay so you can write over here that cervical spine mobility is limited okay so what will be the anesthetic implication of that anesthetic implication of that is there is reduced neck extension and if the neck extension is reduced obviously my laryngoscopy becomes difficult 